When we started adding objects to Mo, we wrote functions like these two, int v and close v. These functions have a lot in common. The result is always a list, and that list represents an object. Inside the list, we have pairs, and each pair in these lists represents a method. The inputs of the function are the fields for the object, and overall, these two functions are constructor functions. When we call the int v function with a number, what we get back is an int v object. Putting it all together, these functions are following a careful pattern. And as you know, in this course, we're in the business of finding patterns and replacing them with reusable abstractions. In this case, the abstraction that we want is that of a class. So our next step now is to implement proper classes for Mo. Classes in object-oriented languages typically play two roles. First, classes make constructors. When we define a class, like the snake class here, we get a constructor function, and afterwards we can do new snake to build a snake object. And the second role that classes play is to give a way to do implementation inheritance. We'll focus on two new features that we get through it. One is the inheritance of methods, and second is static method dispatch. In particular, we'll use static method dispatch whenever we have a rattlesnake method that calls super to get to the snake method. Here's a concrete example. First, we have a class snake, which implements another class which we're not showing called animal. Inside snake, we have a method called endangers, which takes another animal and says whether or not the snake endangers that animal. And this one returns a Boolean. Second, we have a class rattlesnake that extends snake. And inside rattlesnake, the endangers method can return true in two cases. First, if the animal does not have thick skin, then the rattlesnake's bite can poison it. Or rattlesnake endangers returns true whenever it's the case that any snake can endanger that animal. So we call super to get at the snake implementation of the endangers method. And at the bottom, we declare two animals. Animal A is a rattlesnake and animal B is a mouse. And lastly, we call A.endangers B. So we're asking whether the rattlesnake endangers the mouse. The result here is going to be true, but let's slow down and focus on how we get to that true result. And we want to pay special attention to the method calls that happen along the way. First, A.endangers, this call has to be a dynamic lookup. And that's why it's written in blue. Statically, our language knows that A is an animal. It does not know that A is a rattlesnake because we have the type animal up here. So we have to have a dynamic lookup to realize that the object that A is bound to is a rattlesnake. And so we jump up to this endangers method. Inside the method, A dot has thick skin is also written in blue. That needs to be a dynamic lookup because A is an animal. And statically, we're not sure if this A is really an animal instance or if it's an instance of some subclass. But on the other hand, the super call is written in purple because this one could be a static lookup. We know that since we're inside the rattlesnake class, and because rattlesnake extends snake, super refers to snake. So the endangers method that we want for this call is exactly the endangers method up above inside snake. As we implement classes, we'll pay close attention to this distinction between dynamic lookups and static lookups.